Hello everyone, I'm Joe Yuen and I'm doing a gameplay commentary. Not only that, I don't even play this game anymore. This is of course Ultimate Marvel vs Capcom 3 gameplay. To be honest, I really need to get this out because I recorded it ages ago with my friend and we were looking forward to it. So I didn't want to turn it into nothing. But I really want him to be in it, but we can't find time, so I'm soloing it. The game these games were all played by me and Spike and Nesh casually in hotel room at Shadowloo Showdown earlier this year in February. Yes, it does sound sort of gay, but it was my gift to him and his now fiance. And why not? He came all the way from Sydney and yeah, he's a much better player than me. So the reason I'm making this video is just to talk about what I like to call my Marvel journey. I've always wanted to share my experience in Marvel, especially when it came to competitive play. Only thing was, I could never break top 8. The furthest I've ever gone is close, like top 12. Only time I have made the top 8 was when Melbourne top players weren't playing at the time, so I don't count it. My first tournament I've ever entered was BAM, Battle Arena Melbourne 2011. I was completely inexperienced in tournament play, so as expected, I got my ass handed to me and went 0-2 without getting a win. However, with that tournament, I got to meet a lot of different players, know the community, and got better from there on. Also, that tournament had an early build of Ultimate Marvel vs Capcom 3, and I was able to get a lot of pre-game release footage of it. And I got a slight upper hand because of it. And I got to learn Virgil a little early. Yeah, for the rest of the tournament, I just played the alpha version of Ultimate Marvel vs Capcom 3. After that tournament, I actually only ever went 0-2 again uh, one time in BAM 2013, when I went with a completely different team that barely had any tournament experience. Most of the time I go 2-2, two and two, so even it out. Usually winning my first game, then losing one game, then winning a game in the loser's bracket, then losing again. However, I also have history of always versing the guy who comes second first round, and those tournaments I usually go 1-2. and two. Actually, that's how the last two Shadowless Showdowns I've been to resulted in. I lost to the guy who came second. My most disappointing moment was BAM 2012. Reason? It was disappointing because it would have been the furthest and closest I made to the top 8 in a major tournament. But like usual, I choked and to a piping Hagar. What made it really disappointing is that I actually had a small crowd supporting me, but I couldn't pull it off, and that was probably the peak of my Marvel competitive career. I don't think I ever made it further since then. That tournament, I remember, I was one game away from competing for a chance to play for top 8. Well, that's enough for some of my tournament history. How about I tell you about my Marvel vs. Capcom 3 teams? I've actually never really stuck to one team. I've always changed it because I always wanted to be unique. Did that hinder my performance? Probably yes. Could I have done any better if I was using a more normal higher tier team? I'll never know. All my teams in this game have never really been high tier because they all involve mostly low, lower tier characters. When Marvel vs. Capcom 3 got first announced, I was excited about playing Chris Redfield because it was 2009 when they announced it and I just beat in Resident Evil 5 like 5 times completing it. 100% everything. I wanted to play as Chris Redfield, so he's been in my Marvel teams ever since, except the one year that I went 0-2 was because I didn't use Chris on the team. What a coincidence. My very first competitive team for the original Marvel vs. Capcom 3 was Chris, X-23 and Tron. I used Tron because she was pretty OP back then, but it was really, really the only character I knew how to use with Chris. X-23 was there because I wanted some form of rushdown. But really, the team wasn't that great. They didn't click too well. So when Ultimate Marvel's Capcom 3 came out, I knew I really needed a new team. And because I played a lot of Virgil in the Alpha build, I picked it up straight away. It doesn't matter anymore because I've forgotten how to completely play Virgil. Yeah, but my team from 2011 November to December consisted of Ghost Rider, Chris, and Virgil. Yes, I became more of a Zona player because Chris got some really good buffs. At first, I did want to use Phoenix Wright, Virgil Chris, but then Phoenix became terrible. In 2012, January to May, I used Nova, Virgil Chris, because I was learning how to rush down and mix up more. It worked well for a bit, but I couldn't really get a solid, consistent flow going. So after watching Marvel streams, I noticed the game became more of a Virgil heavy game. I gave up on top tier Virgil and Nova at the same time. I don't really know what my motivation was but I just don't like playing top tier characters. So after watching streams, I found a good Jill player and got motivated playing Jill. And she's in Resident Evil 5, so I was like, why not? 
And to even be more unique, let's throw Trish in there because she looks kinda cool. So my team became Chris, Trish and Jill, which is probably the, my most successful team to date. The reason the team was so successful was because people weren't ready for my Jill X Factor level 3, and I caught quite a few people off guard with it. They started respecting Jill by snapping her in early. That team lasted from May 2012 to probably May 2013. Yeah, that lasted a whole year. By 2014, I was playing a lot less than I usually do, mainly because they got into Dota more, but that's a completely another story. I still played Marvel here and there, but I never really went back to almost playing and practicing every day when I did it in 2012, which was a bad decision by me because I probably should have focused more on year 12, and also Dota found me halfway through that year as well. My 2014 team was back to Chris, Trish and Jill because I thought it was my most successful team and I probably could have gotten more out of it, but I was wrong. Not practicing and having a team with little chemistry really hurt my performance. Still, I didn't go 0-2. I was still able to squeeze one win here and there. So as we get to 2015, the team I used for Shadowly Shoe Dota um, 2015 was Wesker, Chris and Jill. Yes, I went complete Resident Evil. He had good chemistry and my friend recommended to me. Went 1 and 2 still, but it felt like I didn't lose all too hard after only practicing the team for like literally one week before the tournament started. And that is the history of my Marvel vs. Capcom 3 teams. I remain loyal to Chris and Jill. I finally stepped somewhat into the dark side and picked up Wesker. My next team I'm thinking of picking up is Wesker, Virgil and Chris. Because that team has chemistry and has good rushdown as well, with fast characters. Another player in Melbourne had a very similar team, but only with Hawkeye instead of Chris. And plus, I could actually practice with that team at tournaments or casual meetups, because I wouldn't have to rely on finding a console with Jill on it, because most of the time, there are no Jill setups. Yes, it would be sad to drop Jill because she's such a fun character, but it's so hard at the same time, because I never really get to practice with that team versus a live opponent until the stakes are up and tournament time begins which I only have a handful of games to warm up with my main team. At this point in my competitive fighting game life, I, do I feel like playing Marvel again? Absolutely! I still love competing and supporting the f Australian fighting game community. I think it's still growing, although it seems much smaller than it used to be 3 years ago. I skipped Battle Marina in Melbourne 2015 this year because I was busy working and I didn't have too much of a reason for participating. Does it mean I stopped playing Marvel? No. I still like to play tournaments and I may have enough this and I may even save enough money to go for Sydney later this year to compete in Oz Hado Nationals in September and meet my Sydney friend because he came all the way down to Melbourne. It would be fitting if I did the same. One thing I do notice these days, I'm playing a lot less games to when I used to when I was younger. I might even pick up the game again. Every time I watch streams and tournaments, I really feel like I want to jump back on and start practicing to be able to compete at a high level again. One thing that held me back is the lack of Jill setups, because not many consoles have Jill. Most of the meals I go to don't even have Jill, so I'm always improvising a random team to play with. So I never really get to practice my main team in an offline setting before tournament time. But, oh well. What I'm really hoping happens sometime later down the track after Street Fighter V is released, that they release a new iteration of Marvel vs Capcom, or at least another versus game with a similar manner, and I would truly love to get back into fighting games. Actually, when Street Fighter 5 comes out, I'm going to sit down, learn and practice the game like I did with Street Fighter 4. But I never really sat down for that game and practiced hard for it. Never was too interested in any other fighting games. I would love to play Killer Instinct but I don't have an Xbox One. So I said to myself, when Street Fighter 5 comes out, I'm going to practice the hell out of it. That's what I did for Street Fighter X Tekken but that game died quickly so it was all for nothing. But yeah, I haven't lost my passion for fighting games, I even play Mortal Kombat, but it's a game that I don't really start playing competitively. It's just something very casual. I would prefer playing on an arcade stick as well, as my fingers hurt like hell when I'm playing on a pad. So I'm just sitting here, waiting for the release of Street Fighter V, and I would truly get back into fighting games. Whether I return to Marvel vs. Capcom 3 in the future is really up to me. I may get back into it, I may not. At the moment, I'm torn because I've been making so many different decisions in my life. I'm doing so many things that I don't usually do anymore. I think that about does it for my Marvel vs Capcom 3 journey, or my fighting game competitive career, if you can call it even a career. I know I rarely do gameplay commentary, but I feel like I just really had to get this out there, 
and plus I got to show some ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 footage along the way. Even though the game is not as popular as it used to be. If you do enjoy the video and enjoy my commentary that's completely scripted which you can read it in a link that I'll send you down below in the description, give the video a thumbs up. But if you don't enjoy it, give it a thumbs down. If you can't be bothered, there are plenty of other videos to watch on the internet. I'm Joe Yu, and this has been Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 Gameplay Commentary. Sayonara and enjoy some of the other gameplay.
the danger room with